During a recent boot camp teaching session where I was walking through a number of front end development techniques, a student asked a great question. Referencing CSS styles, she asked, what is the best way to remember all the specific style names and properties? This is a vital question to answer, especially for new students. For example, if you look at the CSS documentation, you'll find literally thousands of potential style options. If you're learning these styles for the first time, that list can be really intimidating. And that doesn't even bring in the idea of learning how the styles all work together with applications as a whole. Obviously, this issue does not only apply to CSS styles. Whether you're learning a new programming language or framework, you're gonna be greeted with a large amount of information that you'll need to memorize or at least know where to reference it. At first glance, this may seem like a very daunting task. And many aspiring developers have actually given up on their learning journey because it just seemed like an insurmountable challenge. However, I'm here to tell you that it's completely realistic for you to learn how to work with large numbers of complex concepts. And if you follow the system I outline in this guide, you're gonna be amazed at how quickly you pick up on memorizing more information than you ever thought possible. Before I go into the memorization system that I've used through the years, it's important to say that repetition is the key to memorizing large amounts of information. None of the techniques I'm gonna give you are going to help if you don't take the time to work through them consistently. With that being said, it's important to know that by itself, repetition is a slow and a very naive memory training technique. As a development student, imagine that if you had a list of a few hundred method names and I were to tell you to memorize them. If you were to simply stare at the sheet of paper and try to memorize the names, how do you think you'd do? If you're like me and the majority of the world, probably not good. The reason why dry repetition isn't a great way to memorize names is because it doesn't give you a frame of reference for those names. In the first memory technique we're going to go through, it's called visual mental mapping. Our minds are incredible at memorization. However, at the same time, our minds are also very picky about how it stores information. Let's run a quick experiment. If I show you 15 random digits, such as these, and I give you five seconds to look at each number in order. How many of the numbers do you think that you're gonna be able to repeat back to me? Unless your name is Dustin Hoffman, then you probably won't be able to name very many of them. However, what if I showed you the pictures of these 15 celebrities? Now, if I give you the same test as with the numbers, do you think you'd do a better job of remembering the list of celebrities or the random numbers? Assuming you know who the celebrities actually are, then you'd be able to repeat back a significantly larger number of the celebrities than the numbers. The reason for this difference is because in this exercise, you have a frame of reference for the celebrities and you also have a visual reference. By combining these two things, your brain was fully prepared to recite back a large number of the items from the second list. With this knowledge in mind, we can apply the same principles for memorizing anything. Because our brains are efficient machines, they naturally sort information based on priority. You're most likely aware that you have short-term and long-term memory. This concept is the reason why you can instantly remember your second grade teacher's name decades later, but you may forget a new acquaintance name 30 seconds after hearing it. Typically, the brain doesn't log knowledge into our long-term memory bank unless it thinks we're gonna need it in the future. This is kind of like how a computer works. If you add text to a document and you add the file to the hard drive, that's kind of like storing information in the mind's long-term memory. However, if you run a calculation in the terminal, the computer processes the information in memory 
and then discards it, which is like our short-term memory system. So when it comes to implementing the visual mental mapping technique, we're essentially tricking our brains into thinking that it needs to move a piece of information into our long-term memory. In the process, we associate a visual image with the term that we want to memorize. A key prerequisite for this to work is that the visualization needs to be relevant to the term or the behavior of the term. Getting back to the developer's initial question, let's see how we can use visual mental mapping to memorize a CSS style. I'm going to use the text decoration property as a case study. In the world of CSS, the text decoration element allows you to add or remove an underlying style to a piece of text. With this in mind, I'll create an image in my mind that would look something like this. So in this example, I have an image filled with decorations. And on top of the image, I have some text that's underlined. And it's sitting on the decorated fireplace mantle. By creating this visual image, I've mapped decoration to underline text, a familiar image to something abstract, and with this mental image in place, I don't have to think or kind of hard code the term text decoration. Instead, I'll think of a decorated fireplace with underlying text sitting on the mantle. This visual is much easier for the brain to accept into long-term memory because it has a direct frame of reference. The text decoration word is no longer a foreign concept trying to invade my memory. Instead, it's catching a ride on an image that already has a home in my long-term memory. Let's take another real-world example of how this can work. Sticking with our celebrity theme, imagine that you wanted to go into a private VIP party in Hollywood for some reason. If you just try to show up, the bouncer at the door will most likely not let you in. However, if you're friends with Brad Pitt and you walk in together, you're not going to have any issues attending the party. Visual mental mapping follows the same principle. Our brains guard our long-term memory to ensure that our mind doesn't get cluttered with useless information. For example, what if you logged every piece of information into your long-term memory that you come across each day? As you drive down the street to work, your brain captures millions of data points, such as street signs, people walking, things like that. If your brain didn't guard against useless information entering your long-term memory bank, all this information would be treated with the same priority as your parents' names. Obviously, this wouldn't be a good idea. So our brains are like the guard in the VIP Hollywood party. And when we attach a new piece of information to something that's already logged in, it's like we're having Brad Pitt escort us into the party. So visual mental mapping seems like a great idea. However, the idea of creating thousands of visualizations isn't very practical. Which is why, when I'm learning a new programming language, I also focus on picking up patterns. Returning to our case study of memorizing CSS elements, let's take a look at the border attributes available in CSS3. As you can see, there are 21 available attributes, and that's just for managing border styles on a web page. As you can imagine, it would be pretty intimidating to memorize this list, especially when you realize it's only a very small percentage of the available CSS styles needed for development. However, if you start to analyze that list, you'll notice a number of trends. For example, there are a number of styles that simply reference top, bottom, left, and right. These styles are simply ways of giving border styles to a specific side of an element. Additionally, you may also notice that each side also has a set of options for color, style, and width. So essentially, if you know that these styles and attributes are available to the border set of elements, this list can be shrunk down to five items, which is definitely more manageable. In addition to creating visual mental maps and using patterns, I'm going to finish off the list of memorization techniques with the recommendation to not copy and paste new concepts that you're trying to learn. I first heard this advice from Zed Shaw, the author of the Learn Hard programming book series. He instructs his readers to not even look at the book at the same time that they're implementing the code. He postulates that by forcing yourself to type in the code without referencing the documentation while typing, it forces the mind to actually think through each keystroke. 
In my personal experience as a developer and with teaching, I've discovered a significant difference between the students that copied and pasted code or simply followed along with the tutorial compared with the students that attempted, even unsuccessfully, to implement the code by themselves. And on one final note, I want to dispel a common fallacy. As a developer, you don't have to memorize every class and method in order to build a project. Even professional programmers constantly look up documentation on a regular basis. Instead of feeling like you have to memorize everything, focus on memorizing the terms that you use the most. This will make the memorization process more practical and natural.